It's red again. Did you know that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's me. Today I'm going to be reading some r slash I don't work here lady. Okay? You ready to hear about it? Okay, let's go. I don't work with you and how many times do I have to say it? I've worked in retail for years and have a few experiences with the whole I don't work here. When I'm in my uniform with company names clearly displayed while I'm out getting groceries after work. At some time after 5am, after a restless night with my baby niece and needing my sleep for work, my phone rings. I woke up sometime during the ringing, walled over with one bleary eye opened, face smooshed into my pillow, the tiniest bit of drool smeared over my cheek. I glance at my phone, don't recognise the number, and hit the decline button. Then roll over and attempt to go back to blissful sleep in the hour I still have before my alarm is due to go off. The phone rings again. I squint at the screen. Don't recognize the number and hit decline. Once again, roll over and try and get back to sleep. Then my phone dings with an incoming text. I groan, pull my phone over to me and blearily read the text. Knobhead here. It's 5.17 a.m. Well, who the F is this? I don't know anyone with the name Knobhead and certainly not someone who would be ringing at this time of the morning and following up with texts. Just an aside, I'm not a morning person. I don't do well being dragged from my sleep and my temper may flare randomly as a result. I angrily type back, Knobhead who? And why are you ringing me so early, waking me up? I hope that will be the end of it. They'll realize they've got the wrong number and leave me to sleep. Did I mention I'm a bit sluggish in the morning and that my brain isn't fully functioning yet? I get a reply back at 5.38. Me having finally drifted off again. The ding wakes me up with a groan. Alright, we were exchanged numbers, so I have a point of contact on the house if I'm stuck. I can call the house and boss could pick me up if lost. And if you need support someone to talk to, you can call me any time, day or night. The fuddled brain attempts to untangle incomprehensible text while I squint at the screen. Can this guy not spell? I'm tired, grumpy. I've been up half the night with a six month old. I also don't have my glasses on because sleeping and really struggle to understand what this guy is babbling on about and nearly checks the time. 5.38 AM, when any reasonable person is still sleeping. This is where my temper gets the better of me. I reply rather snippily, I'll admit. What the hell are you on about? Who's boss? I think you've got the wrong number. And you've gone and woken me up when I've only had a few hours sleep because of the baby. Who rings someone at 5.30 a.m.? Boss the boss. You were awake and kindly offered me a ride, but I can't afford $10 gas today. Thank you for thinking of me. Hope your day is a good one. So now I can definitely add reading comprehension to this guy's lack of spelling, grammar, and punctuation. I would have thought by now he would have the tiniest inkling that maybe he had the wrong number. It's now 5.46 a.m. My reply was short and sweet. Wrong person. It's knobhead, mate. What part of wrong person didn't penetrate? By this point, I'm boiling the kettle for my first coffee because I know I'm not going back to sleep. I fire back a text. I don't know you. I don't know boss. Delete my number and never contact me again. Thank you. I thought that was rather polite given I hadn't even had a coffee yet. Four minutes later, my phone dings. Okay, sorry to hear that. Take care, and I hope your day is nice. Number deleted. Finally, I think. I got through to him. It only took nearly an hour. It's 5.51 now. I'm halfway through my first coffee, still a bit bitter about being woken up early and still not functioning properly. But victory! 6.22 a.m. My phone dings again. Knobhead is back. WTF! I'm so sorry, looks like the old guy gave me wrong number. Please accept my apology, I only just figured it out. Number deleted now. Kind regards, knobhead. Really, knobhead? It took you over an hour to figure out you had the wrong number? You couldn't have accepted that when I first told you? As soon as 9am hit, I contacted my cell phone provider and had his number blocked. Just in case, because for some niggly reason, I just thought I couldn't trust the guy who tells me he's deleted my number twice and also fails to recognize he didn't have the correct number when he was specifically told he had the incorrect person. Well, Knobhead really lived up to his name in that story, didn't he? All right, here is the next story. Karen demands I work a shift for a store I don't work for. 
A few weeks ago, I was working by a phone call about 5.13am by some snotty woman demanding I work the weekend when I don't even work for them, or retail for that matter. This is how it all went down. 5.13am, phone wakes me up. Hello? This is Terry from Bmart. Lucy, you have to work this weekend. Me trying to grasp reality as my brain is still sleeping and I don't know any Lucy or this caller Terry. Hey Terry, you dialed the wrong number. Lose it, please. I hang up the phone and almost drift back to sleep when it rings again and I stupidly answer it. You hang up on me again and I will fire your butt. You are to work the weekend or find another job. No, she didn't say but. She said much worse and now I decided to have some fun with this. The result was very lifting, I might add. Terry, if you want me in, it's overtime Saturdays, double time Sundays. I want this in writing or I will not come in. Figured this will end the call and I could go back to sleep and the only disturbance would be my daughter's cat who decided to pay me a visit and dig her claws into my covers, ignoring the fact that she's sharpening them on me. I was dead wrong. I had to listen to Terry give me some spiel on company policy for full time as an open availability. I cut her off mid-sentence. Terry, I could care less about company policy. You want me to work this weekend, you are paying me what I require and you're putting this in writing. Also, because you annoyed me by waking me twice, I will now only work double time Saturdays and triple time Sundays. Take it or leave it. Oh, don't forget, that's $15 an hour. That means $30 an hour Saturdays and $45 an hour Sunday. I never get to finish saying Sunday because this is what happened next. Holy crap, holy crap, I don't even make $15 an hour. Why the hell do you? Next thing I know, her yelling attracted other stuff and I can hear yelling in the background of why the hell does she make $15 and I only get $9? With others in the background yelling, Why is Lucy getting $15? And I could no longer make out who was saying what other than Terry telling someone I refuse to come in unless I get overtime, which is when some guy takes over the call. This is Bill, the general manager. Lucy, what's this about not coming in unless you get overtime? And where the hell are you getting $15 an hour from? You want me in? Those are my terms. Stop calling and waking me. I could hear Bill in the background with all the commotion saying, that doesn't sound like Lucy, it sounds like a guy. For that insult, it's now triple time the entire weekend. We have a deal? Click. It was then my wife wakes up and asks me what was that all about. I told her it was work calling to let me know I had the weekend off. I go back to bed, kitty sleeping on top, purring. Terry can't even tell the difference between a man's voice and a woman's voice. Well, but you know, I hope Lucy didn't get in trouble for this. Because she was really the innocent party in all of it. I'm sure you guys enjoyed those r slash I don't work here lady stories. Red by red. That's me. I'm red. <laughs> Please give the video a like. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys watching today. Have a great day.